when you get to the end of a course of uh, flooring and you need to cut a piece down for that last little bit what we do is we will take a piece and we measure that uh, thickness over there and then we set our table saw fence to that thickness and then uh, because I like to get a tight fit at the end there what we do is we'll take the planer and we will plane it off that edge um, I, you don't I don't like that kind of safety work I don't like I don't like I value my fingers too much yeah okay so the unknown mechanic having been a corporate guy in charge of safety and all that stuff for many moons is um, in charge of safety on this operation so what we'll do is we will grab the hand planer in this case the Makita four inch planer three inch planer four inch things four inch um, as you know I like Makita tools so once he's done with that then we will plane off this edge here I don't know how tight it is but give it a rip yeah it's good enough the lovely Miss Kelly keeps sending me messages and uh, it blocks my view. Okay, so here we go. We have this V notch in the planer. base of the planer and you run your corner through that like this and that gives you a nice straight 45 degree angle plane. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bad, bad. for the guide. Yeah. Oops. Get out of there. Okay. So, once again, just to make the unknown mechanic happy, we will put the clamps back on. Are these right or left clamps? <laughs> if you value your fingertips, this is the best way to do it. That is correct. If I had a six inch board, I don't have any problem hand holding it by hand. Yeah. But when it's only two inches wide, that's a little too close. That's too close for comfort. And same thing over. I'm trying to. All right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, there. <clears throat> okay, so some of you may be asking, <clears throat> why is Jeff doing that? Okay, well, there you see we've got that angle on the back. And what that does is it allows us to... Fish the piece. <clears throat> yeah, it allows us to... See, if we have <clears throat> a tight fit, and if we have the corner on there, we're not going to be able to get that board down there. But if we put that angle on the back, we can fit the board into the groove, take a hammer, tap it gently, and tap it gently. There. And 
look at that. We have, actually don't even need to do that. I'll just go uh, yeah, down straight from the top. Use the long end. Do that. Okay, okay. do that. All right. Now, this, this edge is sharp. Go ahead. Okay, so then we nail it with the finished nailers. Stainless steel nails. That's because the washing machine goes here. Yeah. Well, we would Even, be able eventually to, they'll rot out. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to nail otherwise. All right. So now we need to uh, shorten it up. Cut this off. So. Uh, and we need to get the yeah, tongue cut, cut it, cut it, off. cut it. No, we don't. The uh, tongue goes in over here, but uh, cut it. Uh, mark it right there's, straight with oh, the edge. There's no tongue on that board. Yeah, mark it straight with the edge. Well, there should be groove. Mm. Oh no. I grabbed a board. You grabbed a bad board. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Last piece. You gotta have some, you gotta have a screw up in there somewhere. And where's it gonna go? Yeah. Where's it gonna go? Or who's gonna see it? Who's gonna see it? Well, it's the last piece. So anyway, there you go. You see how we fit the last board of the row or last row boards in against the wall nice and tightly okay and uh, it kind of works out anyway because it goes in tight and you won't be able to fit it in with the tongue anyway i have to cut the tongue off oh come on i got it too, it's too long are you kidding it's too long. now personally i would have been reckless and done that with the planer but So Mr. Gun Mr. Um, unknown mechanic is on his way back to uh, trim the tongue of the board off and then it will just drop straight in. So I guess there is uh, kind of a screw up in reverse because if the tongue was in there we wouldn't be able to get it in anyway. And so there you go. There's the, the wax. There's the place. There's the wax. There's the wedge. There's the screwdriver at the end to tighten up the and poof. That one's ready to nail. Okay, go for it. And there you go. Two and a half inch stainless steel finish nails to finish the job. And there you go, this end is done. And there's no and shiners, right? No shiners on that no one. No shi shiners being nails yeah. that are sticking up above the surface. Okay, so now. What do you want to work on now? The stove? Uh, yeah, we could do this. Let's the stove. work on things we can finish. Yeah, let's do things that we can finish. All right, so there we go. We got a couple of pieces to finish on the stove. Uh, same thing is over there, so I don't need to show it to you. Okay. Okay, we are going to install the last piece here. And uh, this one here, we did this as a two piece. Talking. Uh, we did this two pieces because it was too much work to remove that piece of trim because the trim on this door is nailed into that trim and I just did not want to have to mess with that much work. So we were able to get this piece to slide under here and basically we just... It came out to about here, and I took a beater block, and we just forced it under here, and it fit perfect. Dropped right in. Could not get the floor nailer on here, so we used the uh, Hitachi finish nailer with two inch, two and a half inch stem steel nails to do this. And this here is the last piece. The unknown mechanic just finished putting the bevel, bevel on the back side of it. And uh, so we're going to give it a test fit. So I will hand the camera over to Mr. Unknown Mechanic. It's out of focus. Oh, I'm going to touch the screen where you're trying to focus. Okay. Now it's possible that I was a little ambitious in how tight I was getting this to fit. Um, yeah, it's 
138. Um, we re relayed the right measurement. Yeah. Needs a little more. Uh, what's it? No. Planing? Are you going to beat it? Uh, well, I'll give it a test beat. Okay, so there's a test beat. It looks like it's going to work. Yeah, it's going to work. I've got to scooch this in. Well, once you get it down there, I think you can. Oh, you got it underneath there, don't you? Already. It went. Yeah, it's got to get just a little farther here, though. Okay, you know, I think you don't go too far. Yeah, a little farther than I want. No, maybe not. No, it, be, it's too far. You might be alright. Well, beat it in there, and then it'll move easier. Now just grab something sharp and just pound it right there. Yeah, was it screwdriver? In search of... Yeah, there's one right here. Thanks, sir. Because you only need about an eighth of an inch. Uh, well, I was going to bring it back to the thing here. That's it. Look centered now. Yeah. Don't pry against that. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Here, you might just pound this down in there. Try that. Here, go ahead, take it. Yeah, that works. That's a that's a good tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, okay, uh, Nelgun. Right, dead nuts in the middle. Dead nuts. Don't go near any edges. There you have it, the last piece. And that yeah. will just caulk in nice. And it finished out pretty nice. Oh, it finished out great. Now, I gotta yank. Oh, you, you got to yank these nails first. You got to get it. Yeah, this is the nail on the bottom of that. I think it's just wood, but we got to trim that. But it's time to feed the animals. <coughs> Man, so, feeding time at the zoo. There's no red light on this thing. Oh yeah, it is. It's it's recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Uh, okay. So the next step is going to be to we just got to get all these nails out of here, trim up the bottom of it a little bit, and it'll pop right back in. Trim back these nails. Get the nail gun and nail back together. And we will be in good shape. <sighs> okay, is this that? No, that's something else. Um, There's some rough stuff in there. This oh, 
these might these nails coming through here might be what scarred your door up. Feel that? Mm, it's possible, but the I mean, there's such little bits, and it depends on which side it was too. You see, that was we added those quarter inch strips in there for the to fit it in here. Oh, these quarter inch strips are not stock. Uh, no, no, the ones back there farther. See, uh, going horizontally. Oh, stiffeners. Or vert vertically, yeah. Vertical. Yeah. Space. Okay, so there you go. That is it. Got this side finished. We've got that side finished. We're still working on this end here. And we got that there. And what's going on here with the mortar is the um, wall uh, lath plaster came apart so I broke out the loose lath and I put in new mortar so we're just gonna let that set up for a couple hours and then we will uh, well we're done here so no problem okay so this is what we got done today we finished up the floor in the transition between the bathroom and the rear entry. And uh, you saw that on another section of video where we were dealing with this. And we got the laundry in. See, it's all nice and tight to the back wall there. And this is all nice and tight to the wall here. A uh, base shoe half by three quarter will cover that. This is for the dishwasher, everything here, nice tight fit. Over here is the stove area. Had to um, replace some mortar in the wall there, or not mortar, but uh, plaster. I used some VersaBond thin set and uh, heavy duty mesh tape to fill the area there. And uh, so that's all nice and solid. So we've got the stove area in, we finished over by the fridge. So this here is what the kitchen area will look like. So we have the appliances to get here still. Got a nice fit underneath the cabinet here. Got a nice fit in around all of this here. This was the unknown mechanics special area. Complete with frustrations and minimal swearing. Okay, here I'm gonna shoot over there. Okay, so back here, that is the rear entry and laundry where we just were. And this here is the view of the kitchen looking in from the dining room. So you can see everything from here. You have, excuse me for the rattle shaking. There's the sink, the main area of the kitchen. Stove is over here. Microwave range hood is up there. Fridge is right in this area here. So we have got a really nice little kitchen set up here. And this is the desk, of course. So it's like an almost perfect kitchen for a chef. You have got your sink and your dishwasher very nicely positioned for user friendliness. You've got your kitchen triangle, which you've got your stove, fridge, and sink, dishwasher. So all of that stuff is in easy walking distance. It's about uh, maybe a little over six feet wide in the center of the room so anyway uh, we're gonna finish the floors here um, might even get sanders tomorrow and go to town on it and then we'll put down a sealer coat and two coats of uh, floor finish water base oil base on this sealer it just works better okay so that is the kitchen area so all we have left to finish are these small areas here, that, 
that, have to put a bullnose for the doorway there. And then we have the same kind of a situation in that dark area and over in that dark area on the other side of the living room. And there you see my lone pagoda light out in the yard. So anyway, this is going to look really, really nice. We're down to two bundles. You know, I think we're gonna, I think we're Might gonna end up. More. No, I don't think we'll have to buy more, but I think we're gonna end up at just about it. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows per bundle. So there's two, three, there's one bundle for there. And, uh, bundle and a half for in here so we're going to be really close I love it I love it when that happens when you buy just about the right amount okay so that is uh, that is the state of the kitchen for now and uh, hopefully things will uh, come to a fruition here in the next couple of days. Floors will be finished, appliances will be in, and things will look radically different. And we gotta paint everything too. Okay, see you on the next video.